What is happening here may be unique in American history. The marchers you see are not protesting unfair labor practices or advocating a political cause. They are here to challenge the conscience of the wealthy and powerful Watchtower Society, better known to the public as Jehovah's Witnesses. Jehovah's Witnesses have a massive international organization with millions of members and hundreds of millions of dollars. A gift that God gave to the human race. Amen, brother. Families and peace. But this deeply committed group is not likely to be intimidated. They have an urgent message to deliver. You can't see the hurt that we feel, but we have, we have so much pain because so many of us are separated from our families because of the of the Watchtower organization's rules, unfair, unkind, unloving, unchristian rules. The organization sets itself up in the place of Christ, and that is something that the Bible does not teach. The reason we are here today is to attract attention to a genuine false prophet, a genuine false prophet that Jesus warned us about. They have lied to us, they have deceived us, and we have the documented evidence. place for greed, heartbreak, evil, a nightmare far removed from mankind's greatest dream, paradise. Surely all of us are thrilled at the prospect of surviving the end of this wicked world and living on into God's righteous new order. What a grand future awaits us. This confident statement, brimming with hope, is from the Watchtower Society's publication, you can live forever in paradise on earth. It is this promise that attracts the new convert to become a Jehovah's Witness. The thing that attracted me to the Watchtower Society was that they taught that Armageddon was so close that those uh, who were living now would never have to die, but that they could live forever. I think one of the greatest uh, things that appeals to the people is that uh, we are taught, that we were taught, that uh, we could live forever here on the earth and there would be peace, perfect peace among men and animals. The little children could play with the animals and uh, there would be no harm or no hurt in all of the earth. Jehovah's Witnesses came along with a positive message, I thought, from the Bible. God had a plan and purpose for Martin Merriman and that is what I wanted, to please God. Martin Merriman was not alone on the Jehovah's Witness road. Statistics show that in the 22-year period between 1963 and 1985, the Jehovah's Witness organization grew from one million members to three million. Jehovah's Witness spokesman Eugene Mortensen. The increase that Jehovah's Witnesses are experiencing right now is phenomenal. Last year, for an example, worldwide, we had a 6.8% increase. It all began in Pennsylvania in the late 1800s when Charles Taze Russell came under the influence of a second Adventist preacher. Russell initiated his own Bible study class, a small group that would ultimately grow to become the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. Borrowing directly from the prophetic speculations of Nelson Barber, a New York second Adventist, Russell claimed that in 1799, the world had entered the time of the end. That in 1874, Jesus Christ had returned invisibly. And that the world would come to an end in the year 1914. In 1879, Russell, then 27 years of age, was so passionately convinced these prophetic dates were given by God, that he sold his prosperous clothing business and struck out in a new direction. With very little education or theological background, he began printing the magazine Zion's Watchtower and Herald of Christ's Presence. Known today as the Watchtower, this publication 
which has grown from an initial printing of 6,000 to well over 288 million copies annually, dictates all major doctrines to Jehovah's Witnesses. During his lifetime, Russell authored a vast amount of literature, including a series of volumes entitled Studies in the Scriptures. According to Russell, no one could understand the Bible without these books, and reading the Bible alone would lead only to spiritual darkness. One of Russell's teachings was that Egypt's Great Pyramid was designed and placed there by God as his second witness next to the Bible. It would be an instrument to reveal his great plan of the ages for mankind. This measurement indicates the length of the year, the weight of the earth, the distance to the sun, etc. Russell believed his dates and chronology were confirmed by the measurements of the interior passageways of the Great Pyramid. According to Russell, the passageways verified 1914 as the year the world would end. Finally, 1914 came and went. Russell and his followers were not raptured from the earth, and the end had not come. John Knight, who was 15 years old at the time, remembers what came next. Well, when 1914 came, of course, uh, we had to change our views, just like we had to change the views later. The date was pushed forward to 1915, then 1918. Certainly Armageddon was just around the corner. But in 1916, Charles Taze Russell died, sick, weary, and disappointed. A massive stone pyramid stands today at his gravesite as an embarrassing reminder of his false prophecies. Through hard-fisted inside political manipulation, Joseph Franklin Rutherford, a Missouri lawyer who had given himself the title of judge, became the second president of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society in 1917. In 1918, Judge Rutherford's lecture, entitled Millions Now Living Will Never Die, was the beginning of a worldwide recruiting effort called the Millions Campaign. Not too surprisingly, it proclaimed the coming destruction of the existing world. It would happen soon, in 1925. Based upon the promises set forth in the divine word, we must reach the positive and indisputable conclusion that millions now living will never die. In 1920, the Millions Book was published. In it, Rutherford claimed the Bible proved that in 1925, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and other faithful men of old were to be resurrected, to rule henceforth as princes on the new Paradise Earth. Fully convinced that Rutherford's prophecy was true, many witnesses sold their homes and businesses and took to the road. Living in cars and trucks like itinerant peddlers, they spread the warning. As 1925 drew closer, some farmers even refused to plant crops because they believed the end was at hand. Finally, 1925 came. And, as in 1914, nothing happened. Once again, the Watchtower...